All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Automotive Linux Summit. My name is, is Walt Miner, and I'll be giving the presentation on uh, an introduction to AGL architecture and roadmap. So, so who is this guy? So I'm the, I've been a Linux Foundation employee now for eight years. I just loaded, all, I just uploaded, before we started, I just uploaded all the, uh, the slides to the schedule page so you can download all this. Because there's a lot of links in here you can use to go reference additional information. So I've been the AGL community manager for the last eight years. Um, used to work at Monta Vista and Mentor Graphics, did a lot of work with uh, Auto Continental. I worked at Continental and Motorola's automotive groups, as well as Motorola's mobile phone division. And most excitedly, my new recent endeavor is I am an apprentice sushi master, and I have a certificate to prove it. See? I know. I made sushi, and it was delicious. So this talk is really intended to be kind of a brief intro into the AGL architecture, and I've got a lot of links to other resources as we go through this. Um, for a general AGL introduction, uh, there's another presentation on YouTube that I gave. It might have been here, or it might have been at Open Source Summit Europe. I don't remember which one. And uh, Jan Simon Muller and I, uh, Jan Simon's right here. He's our AGL release manager. He, we will be available for office hours at 4:20. Um, they've organized a nice desk with oak desk with credenza and a corner office for me. It's really amazing. You'll love it. There's leather-bound books. No, that's true. Um, we have an AGL sponsor booth. You can go see some of the. You can go see. We have three different demos that are running. Um, and then tomorrow at 5:40. Kind of the last session of the of the uh, of the summit, we'll have an AGL developer birds of a feather session. So you can come, ask questions. Myself, Jan Simon, uh, some of the other Scott Murray is is also uh, a co-speaker with me. We'll be get, so any kind of questions you have about the current state of AGL development, or how to write your own app, or anything else, you can come ask us, and and we can make up an answer for you. So AGL uh, unified code base, that's what we call the distribution. We've had 14 major releases, and I think Dan showed a picture of all the fishes. We'll be announcing some new fishes at this presentation, so you guys will be the first ones to learn some of the new fish names that are coming up in 2023. We uh, really have the goal of unifying the best of open source software into a single code base and use, utilizing that for the entire industry. Our job is really, our goal is to really reduce fragmentation and focus on innovation and new features. And like Dan said, I think Dan said in his presentation, his keynote today, we're production ready. We're in Toyota and Subaru and other vehicles and coming to many more very soon. AGL has, <coughs> We're uh, the philosophy code first, upstream first. We've invested in automotive software components that are not available anywhere else. We are, and I'll, I'll show you what some of those are in, in a few slides. We're continually evaluating open source technologies, open source projects as they evolve, and finding uh, best in class use case, best of class packages for automotive use cases. And I'm going to show some examples of how we've continue to evolve and, and, and evaluate what's out there, and then we've evolved the AGL UCB over the years. Um, we also are pretty unique in a lot of the open source projects uh, that the Linux Foundation runs, is we invest in uh, developers, we, do, we invest in contractors and developers to directly develop code for the AGL UCB. And we've also taken some of that investment and had our developers, our contractors work on open source projects like Pipewire to get automotive use cases into audio, and Yocto, and Lava, and a, a host of others over the years. So let's talk about the transformation of AGL. So pre-Lucky Lamprey, pre-release 12, 
our um, initial releases included a, a lot of carryover and improvement of Tizen IVI packages. And what we found as we, as we kind of moved along uh, was that that wasn't, in some cases, wasn't serving us well. In some cases, we replaced some of the Tizen IVI packages, especially in, auto, in automotive. But we also augmented it. We also added, created an AGL compositor, which, wasn't, uh, which, was, which was all new, uh, something we invested in based on Wayland. We added a web app manager that's based on the web OS open source engine uh, from, from LG as well as it's also based on Chromium. And so when we got, when we got to Lamprey, when we got to version 12, we had built up from Tizen, we included, we still had some Tizen kind of components in there. We had the AGL app framework, which was based on Murphy and Smack and things like that. And um, that was version 12. We released that in uh, 2021. And we'll continue to do updates, in 2020 rather, and we'll continue to do updates of Lamprey until 2024. Um, well now, what's happening in 2024 is we're using the uh, Dunfell version of Yocto, which is version 3.1, and they put out a new patch release about every six weeks, and we quickly follow up about two to three weeks later with our own patch release based on the new Yocto version. Um, but Lamprey is the final release version with that legacy AGL app framework based on Tizen. Um, so if you have legacy AGL applications, we'll continue to support that release for another couple of years. So in, this is kind of the evolution of Lamprey over the last few years. You can see we're now up to 12.1.7. I think that's our ninth or 10th patch release of Lamprey. Um, so this year, 2022, saw us transforming from Lamp between Lamprey and Needlefish. We had another release, Marlin, in between, and Marlin is very much a transition release. We, we actually have end of, end of life that release already. Um, but basically, we deprecated the old application framework. We, um, we deprecated Smack, and we moved, SC, we moved to SC Linux. Um, and we added a number of different images. We added Flutter to our tool, our app, our app toolkit. So it's really a completely different beast that we have now. We've also transformed from using the uh, vehicle signal manager that we had written and we were maintaining on our own uh, to now using the open source version of uh, Kuxa.val and uh, VSS that is being developed jointly with Covisa. So Needlefish was initially released in August, and you can see we've already, this slide, I think I missed one, but we, we've already made the 1402 release. So uh, you can see we've already started making some, some patch releases to, to um, Needlefish, and we'll continue to do that at least until March. This is just kind of an overview of our schedule for this year. You can see Opt optimistic Octopus, the Milestone 1 release, uh, I think was just sent out, and um, we'll be starting the release cycle for Octopus, and I'll show that in our 2023 schedule in a moment. So what have we done, some more detail on what we've done in 2022 with, uh, Lam with, with Needlefish. Toyota developed a Flutter Embedder solution for AGL. So you may be familiar with Flutter and Dart, uh, basically developed by Google to create you know, very nice looking, easy to develop uh, UIs. Uh, but it was really based on, a, it was really for a mobile phone. So now we, and for an Android solution. So uh, Toyota has created an embedded version. There's a meta Flutter layer that we have for AGL. Uh, created by Toyota and, and us, and that's now available in the Needlefish release. And we will have um, reference apps that you can see a preview of in our, um, in our sponsor booth, in our green machine. We have some reference apps 
that were developed not by Toyota, but by AGL developers. And we actually had some Google Summer of Code students who developed some apps. Um, and so, and Joel Winarski from Toyota will provide some really some detailed information on the Flutter solution and how you can use, how you can make use of it, and what the what the future is. And he'll, that'll be at 1:30 this afternoon. Let me silence this thing. Uh, instrument cluster expert group. So. Um, they did, they've did. they done a lot of work this year. They added DRM Least, the graphics solution, uh, to, to, the, to the UCB. They now have a reference solution with instrument cluster and our IVI in containers. Um, and that is basically a preview of version of that is available in our booth again, next to our green machine. I believe you can see a, maybe a, a, a slight Change, slightly different version of that in the Renaissance booth. Um, Kirk Hausan of Renaissance will be giving a presentation on the details of what the IC extra expert group has been working on, and that will be today at 1.50 p.m. So we had this legacy AGL app framework that was based on Tizen Murphy, and in, you can see in Lamprey, uh, we, we, we supported features such as app start and stop. Uh, we had the Linux Smack for our Linux security module. We had sandbox, Smack based sandboxing. We had packaging based on W3C widgets, and we were using IPC as our standard web interface. As we move forward, uh, we've already switched to using, at, we created something called App Launch D, which uses System D units for managing our applications. We're continuing to expand that coverage. Um, we've switched to using SE Linux now. Sandboxing, we should be adding, actually, I think we have some ideas on what we'll do for the Octopus and def probably for Octopus, definitely for Pike release. Um, packaging, we're still working on a solution, and we're moving to gRPC as our standard uh, IPC interface. In the end, you know, this gives us something that where we were maintaining most of this ourselves, there's not a lot of buy-in, Smack isn't really being maintained by anybody. Um, our app framework was homebrewed, there's a lot of maintenance to it. Uh, in the end, this gives us something that is much more future-proof. Um, we're using System D, which is clearly, you know, kind of won the the war in terms of how to do startup and how to do how to do a lot of things in Linux. We do have SC Linux right now. It's only available in permissive mode, and we, of course, are looking. You'll see a little bit later. We're looking for help or donations in creating some some rules for governing uh, SC Linux. We, in terms of packaging and sandboxing, we studied Flatpak. In theory, it meets most of our requirements, but that was only in theory. We found that extensive uh, custom runtime support would be required for AGL. And again, with the, you know, the idea that we're upstream first, that we are trying to maintain as little as possible that we can reuse from somewhere else, without hard and fast requirements from our OEM members for what they want to see in, in packaging, we really didn't see the benefit in spending a lot of money and a lot of developer time creating a, a flat pack solution, runtime solution for AGL that we couldn't be guaranteed anybody would ever use. So we've, just, we've deferred that for now. Um, and we, basically we're working to enable some basic sandboxing using system D. That's kind of where we're at right now. And so that will again give us something that is easily maintainable, should do you know, 80 to 90% of what, people, what we think people want to do, and um, should be fairly, fairly future-proof. And as System D adds new features, we can pick those features up too. So IPC. Um, standardizing uh, our IPC to gRPC and protobufs across the, U across the UCB, basically looking to replace all of our legacy WebSocket-based AGL service binders 
uh, with gRPC. Um, basically gives us now a standard methodology to add new services. We're, in the pro we're still in the process of converting some of our legacy services over to using gRPC and protobufs, but we've done most of the, we've done a lot of the major ones now. So I just talked about SE Linux, we're already running in permissive mode, and we're looking for a developer to work on rules for non-permissive SE Linux, or for one of our members to donate something that is already being used in production, or at least some concepts that are already being used in production. The AGL compositor, so over the last few years, we invested in creating a Wayland AGL uh, compositor to replace the Qt compositor that was being used uh, in the original versions of AGL. Um, there's some information here in this, this uh, uh, blog entry from Collabra. Um, and Marius Vlad, who did, who did virtually all of this work, um, he has a presentation today at 3.30 p.m. And Marius will be talking about kind of the, the development of the compositor and use cases and how to make, how to best make use of the, of the compositor. We made a significant, we were using, originally using, um, if you go way, way back, there was some, some use of the old uh, Genevi audio manager. Then we had created the 4A, the AGL advanced audio framework. Um, again, we didn't want, we wanted to stop maintaining something on our own. Um, so we decided to look at Pipewire because that was in its early stages of being developed by the same people who developed Pulse Audio using the lessons learned from Pulse Audio and improving it on it with Wire Plumber, uh, Pipewire and then Wire Plumber. So um, we made investments in collaborating with that community and driving some of the, driving the automotive use cases in there that we had identified over the years. Um, and so you can see there's a couple of uh, blog entries from Collabra who did, who did that Pipewire work with us um, and with the uh, Pipewire and Wire Plumber communities. Uh, pi wire, so basically, we have a really robust audio solution at this point and allows for a lot of uh, configuration and policy management. And so you can basically use it however you want in an, auto in an automobile. We're using uh, Jenkins and Lava to drive our uh, CI. There's a presentation here from Jan Simon uh, given at a past conference. And then he'll be giving uh, a presentation right after this, right here, stay tuned, on uh, speeding up builds and using some of, the, some of the work that we enabled in Yocto and that we actually did in Yocto and, and pushed upstream uh, to, to use PR serve and things like that and um, speeding up builds and making your developer, making life for the developers hopefully much easier and faster. So what are we doing next year? We, our newest release will come out after CES 2023, February. Uh, again, we'll continue to use Kirkstone, the latest Yocto project LTS. Um, we'll, continue, we'll have more app framework and, and gRPC work done. So more of our legacy service binders will be converted over to using gRPC and using app launch D. Our, uh, we'll have CES demo, and basically we have the preview version using Flutter. You can see the, some of the WAM apps, some of the web application manager apps the, um, in the Egalia booth this week. Egalia has a, a sponsor showcase this week, and they've done, they've done all of the web app manager work and the Chromium updates, and so they're showing a lot of their work. They've taken the, Q, the, the legacy QT apps that we had and move some of those over to an HTML5 solution. We're also looking for donation of rules for SC Linux. I don't think this is going to happen in Octopus. And the instrument cluster demo, the instrument cluster container solution becomes one step closer to um, production readiness. The other exciting thing is one of our GSOC students, and you can see this in the booth, one of our GSOC students worked on a Flutter version of the instrument cluster and we're showing that on the green machine in the, in, the, in the booth that we have this week. So there's actually a lot of, we probably have three or four 
different instrument cluster solutions that you can take advantage of uh, in the AGL UCB, different images that you can, you can take advantage of. So here's some exciting news. We have new fishes. So we have opt optimistic octopus coming out in September, in um, February rather. Then we'll start development on our uh, next release, which will be uh, release 16 or prickly pike. And then, boy, cues are really hard. Quirky quillback will be our our uh, 17th release that will come out in the beginning of 2024. You can see we have a lot of. Uh, Events that we're planning for next year between FOSDEM and Embedded World again. We have some all member meetings, uh, the Embedded OSS Summit. Uh, we also have, I don't know if I have it on here, but we also have some face to face workshops that we do. Uh, we have some of those planned, you know, in between these times where we can have developers getting together. And you can watch our mailing list or our wiki page for announcements on those, those face to face workshops. So kind of a little more, little more color to the octopus schedule. We've got the milestone one is done. Milestones two and three will come out, um, one before Christmas, one after CES, and the final release just before we go to FOSDEM. Uh, then we'll have patch releases about every two months, would be the, was the initial plan. The <clears throat> for 20, next year, uh, 2023, Toyota will continue to add features to the Flutter and better. We don't have kind of an exact feature list right now. We're working with the IVI expert group on that, uh, exactly what they're going to they're gonna do next year in terms of uh, Toyota's participation. But I think really the kind of one of the big benefits, both the Toyota and to AGL, is the synergy that we get with the two different teams uh, working together. Um, you know, I think at first there was some reluctance on the Toyota, Toyota's part to engage with us heavily. Um, then as they saw that we were really making use and driving their, their solution pretty hard, and we were actually asking for things that they hadn't thought about, we're now, we, we now, we now we have a weekly meeting with them. So instead of kind of being at arm's length, we talk to them every week. They're using our JIRA for uh, issue management for, you know, the EAGL specific issues. Um, and we've got, you know, obviously our reference apps are not developed by Toyota, they're developed by UCB developers. And so, of course, whenever, as, as someone who's developed platforms for a lot of different companies, what you always learn is that your users do things in surprising ways. They always use your platform in ways that you don't expect, which inevitably breaks something, which I think has been beneficial and helps harden and uh, provide stress, case, stress tests and additional use cases for the Toyota developers. So I think you know, there's been a lot of excellent synergy. We'll continue to add additional reference apps to the UCB next year uh, and improve the ones that we have. So Vehicle to Cloud Expert Group, um, they've worked on, so last, this year and, and 2022, uh, AWS has worked on a demo that they showed at CEA, at, I'm sorry, at Embedded World in June. They've continued to evolve that demo. Uh, they've got some vehicle to cloud using their, their, their AWS cloud services. And they will show the latest and newest improved version of that at CES. I, I thought they were going to be here this week, but, I don't, but they're not. Um, they have identified a new lead uh, at AWS. He's a, a former Stellantis employee who was a cloud architect there. He, they are committing to creating a, a, a spec, a message schema, and a reference implementation, both on the embedded side and the cloud side, and using MQTT that will be open sourced using AGL. So James is trying to get this initial work done and ready for the March timeframe so we can start um, basically, he's looking for us to help him with um, uh, error handling. He wants to do some FE, FE, FNEA analysis, things like that. He wants us, kind of like the Toyota relationship, to help stress test his work and, and put it to use. So that hopefully, um, with the Pike release in July, this will all be in there and it will be somewhat, you know, stress tests 
And then with the, Q, the cool-back release in September or in 2024, AWS will then turn that around, put that into their demo, and we'll have a robust solution. So again, anybody is welcome to participate in this. There's a lot of interest around vehicle to cloud tasks and things like that. Um, I think somebody just stopped by uh, and talked to me before I, I gave the presentation here. So, um, And then virtualization and containers. Um, Ms. Yamasan gave a really great overview of virtualization in, the, in, in starting with mainframes at IBM all the way up to the present day. Um, Jerry Zhao has been our lead for the expert group for the last few, uh, few years. He's uh, here this week. He'll be giving a presentation today at 4.30, uh, jointly with Hayden Peterswald from AWS on the service mesh and containers. Unfortunately, Hayden has, has come down with something. He's pretty sick, and he will not be here in person. He's at a hotel locally. We're trying to figure out exactly how he can participate. But um, so we now have, you can see this demo of what Panasonic has done. Um, running in, again, in the AGL Showcase Sponsor booth. There's a lot of exciting demos you can come see. You can, you can see the work that they've already, Panasonic has already done in, in conjunction with the Vert EG. That's kind of the culmination of work that was done with Panasonic, uh, Virtual Open Systems, Open Synergy, and uh, ARM and other companies. And this has really come together quite nicely. Um, and this demo is running in the uh, AGL Sponsor booth. And then, um, for next year, of course, we'll continue to harden this, continue to work on this and add additional use cases. Uh, the service mesh concept, we are talking with a lot of different interested parties like AWS and Sophie and people like that on what that looks like as we move forward. So um, I think that's it for my slides. Basically, AGL, everything we do is open. Um, we have an open mailing list anybody can join. We have a weekly developer call every Tuesday that anybody can join, ask questions. You can see exactly what's going on. All these expert groups I talked about have calls at least every two weeks. Uh, IVI meets every week. So you can join those calls. We're also on IRC. Um, just don't ask us about any mechanical issues because we probably can't help you fix your transmission in your 1967 Dodge Dart. Um, so again, all these slides, all these links are available on the schedule, uh, the SCED page. I've uploaded them, and um, if you have any, if anybody has any questions, um, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, do you see very bad the problem you have in this problem that uh, in the system where it, it gets hard to speed the flow with the uh, maximum the, the speed of the, the hardware? And also, what are the trends, like I can't tell you the trend, so what are the trends you see in general hardware for both storage and network using the cloud? So I'll repeat the question for the... Um, Jerry, do you, you want to come up and answer? Because you have to, because you, if, if, if people are going to hear you. So Jerry can answer, answer that question, but um, the, uh, so the question was about Vert.io and how Vert.io, uh, well, first of all, the, the, is Vert.io up to the task in terms of performance and speed in the uh, self-driving arena? And then the second part of the question was, um, what about what is the what do we see as the evolution of hardware and networking in the in the vehicle as we as we move forward and with Bird IO? So I'm going to ask uh, Jerry Zhao from our our team to uh, to uh, take a crack at that one. Um, so basically, 
Okay, uh, I'm the virtualization expert group leader, and thank you for your question. It's a very uh, good question. So first of all, uh, I think uh, as uh, um, Walt and, uh, and Dan explained in the previous uh, presentation, so AGL is now focusing on the uh, IVI or infotainment, this kind of a non-real-time uh, operating uh, features. But regarding this ADAS or AD, uh, is uh, especially requiring the real time and the function safety. Um, so that is uh, indeed a big challenge uh, for the world in terms of overhead. But on the other hand, actually the uh, some community like uh, Oasis or 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 Sophie uh, already aware of these problems and uh, start a discussion. So one popular uh, solutions maybe is there is that uh, uh, embed the virtual backend into the hardware. So that means uh, from, the, from the software point of view, you will still have the virtual interface, but you embed the virtual backend into the hardware, so you have uh, some kind of hardware assistance for the virtual. So in that case, if you can reduce the overhead, although this is uh, still undergoing and, uh, yeah. But, can, but That's in the keep future. the word I will interface there. Yeah. How, far, how far into the future do you see that, Jerry? Uh, I think maybe it's still three to five years to, to have a complete solution. But I, I, I think for some, uh, for example, for NAT, uh, virtual NAT, I think Red Hat has uh, already done a lot of work in, in that uh, to realize that. But for some more complicated uh, automotive devices like GPU or radio codec or something else, uh, maybe I think we still need some time to do that. So it may be a hybrid solution at first with networking yeah, and other features built in yes. and graphics later coming later. Exactly. I know, I know that um, yeah, well, I know that virtual. Um, that was kind of the future, right? So I know that I know that virtual open systems. Um, no, not virtual open. Open Synergy and Panasonic have done some benchmarking on latency and performance of the AGL solution, and I, I guess I don't really have the data in front of me, but I, I I think they will come up with a solution that holds up in terms of performance, uh, especially with with respect to latency. Um, in, in a vert IO, es especially as the hardware continue, you know, we're, we're using last generation hardware now to do this. As the next generation of hardware comes and there's more thought towards putting virtualization in there, I, I think the latency and the performance will, will vastly improve. Yes. You have to have the um, okay, uh, I think we have a few more minutes. Any more questions? I'm not on the virtual, is there any, any online? No? Well, if there's no more questions, I am available to answer your questions about sushi making or anything like that. And uh, stop by today, stop by our booth at the sh sponsor showcase or stop by the office hours. And uh, if you think of any questions, we can talk there. Thank you, everybody.